I'm very happy to be talking to Dr. Hessa al Jabba. She is the Secretary General for the Supreme Council for Information and Communication Technology in Qatar. Thank you for, for coming. Now, you're going through a bit of a revolution at the moment because ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, has now um, agreed to uh, uh, allow you to put domain names up in Arabic. What sort of change will that make to the experience of internet users in Qatar? Uh, seeing the Arabic uh, characters in the domain uh, name will really re-enhance uh, uh, the value that we have been trying to remind our youngest that Arabic is an important language because they, they always claim that uh, uh, technology is not uh, with the Arabic language and I thought for, for me that is the most important thing. Because I was astonished to read that Arabic only, well, the, the, the amount of Arabic content on the net is just just above one percent and yet there are 300 million Arabic speakers internationally. And personally I am very passionate about increasing or, or, or a tool to increase the Arabic content on the, on the internet world. And, and I found out, I think, partly because the internet was a late arrival in the Arab region, and mainly most of the people who, and who use internet, they read and understand English. So for them, communicating with English, uh, it is much easier. Uh, now, I know you're a, you're a, passionate, a passionate advocate of y young people adopting information and communication technology, which tend to suggest that you might be a bit worried that they're not taking it up as much as they might. Are you concerned about that? Ten years from now, the people who will be taking decision in a government will not be my generation, will be uh, people who are really uh, intern uh, who are technology savvy and who, uh, whom I call them, they were, they were born uh, uh, digitally uh, native. And I think for the government or for the private sector to make sure that they are really having the right policy that will make them excel and will, uh, will make their impact the uh, maximum, they need to think from now how they will be able to modify the public policy. Maybe we need to modify some of the law and uh, regulation. Because I think that there is one thing I see it with, uh, with young um, generation. They, they will not accept, uh, and especially with technology, because technology is, is, given, is given them access to anything. And we, uh, we are no longer be able to put a kind of guideline what the kids can do or even when they will be, when they become adult, how they can uh, take decision in certain things. Do you see that? You said that, um, you, that young people have an expectation to have access to almost anything, yeah. any sort of information. Yeah. Do you see that the internet is potentially going to be an agent for great political change in, in your region, a region that is not famous for participatory democracy? Yeah, yeah, I would say the way I see it, at least it will give the young people the tools to challenge. And I think that's, and I think there would be a way where government should hear and listen to this. Uh, challenge. I do not anticipate big uh, changes, but at least uh, I do anticipate that uh, the, the youngest will work by themselves to create this because, um, because as you said, they are now having access to everything in I mean, internet from the bad things and from the good things. And it is no longer, uh, and it is no longer the role of the government to kind of uh, decide what uh, what they should see or what they should uh, um, access.